Well, good evening, boys and girls, and welcome back to Bible at Bedtime. And we've been thinking about Elijah, haven't we? And do you remember how Elijah demonstrated to all the people who God is? He's almighty and he's all powerful. And Ahab was certainly shaken by what he saw. And um, then we've seen Elijah um, being looked after. And I just want to tell you what happens next when Ahab tells his wife what happened. It's very interesting, I think. So King Ahab arrived back at his palace in Jezreel and told his wife Jezebel all that had happened. And when she heard what Elijah had done to her prophets and what had happened with Baal, she was oh, really sorry and believed in God. No. She was furious. It's interesting, isn't it? And it reminds us that sometimes um, God will speak to people and show them, surely, that he is God. We can see that God is God just in the beautiful world all around us. But instead of believing, people shake their fists at God. And she shook her fist at God. She was furious. It didn't make her believe in God. It just made her angry with God and made her angry with Elijah. She stormed and she raged and then she sent a terrified servant, poor servant, to go and send a message to Elijah. So a terrified servant arrived um, where Elijah was and gave her this message and she'd said to him, tell that man you can imagine her pointy finger, can't you? Tell that man, she couldn't even say his name, that by this time tomorrow, I shall have done to him exactly what he did to my prophets. May the gods strike me dead if I don't keep my promise. So she hasn't understood anything about God at all, has she? Well, when Elijah heard the angry queen's words from the mouth of the terrified servant, his heart sank. Now, Elijah is known for being a courageous man, but at this point, he's lost all his courage. It's not surprising, is it? It would be a terrifying message to get. And he was really, really frightened. The day before, he'd bravely shown all of Israel, as well as their faint-hearted king, Ahab, that God was great and powerful. But how could he bring them back to the true God while Jezebel ruled the kingdom. And without waiting a minute longer, Elijah set out south to the land of Judah. In fact, he, he pretty well ran 80 miles. He went as far as he could from danger. And for a whole day, he tramped through the brown desert country. Then hot and exhausted, he sat down in the shade of a solitary tree. And the only tree we've managed to find is a little... Christmas candle tree. It wouldn't have looked like that, but it was a tree. And he sat down in its shade and he was feeling very sad and feeling very hopeless and dejected. And he even wished that he could die, perhaps die quietly. What's the use, God, he asked, for all the good I've done, I might as well be dead. Oh, so he really was despairing, wasn't he? And worn out, he fell asleep. Suddenly, he felt a touch on his shoulder and he woke up to hear a voice saying, have something to eat. And to his amazement, Elijah found a loaf of bread and a jar of water. So this is the best we could do. We've got some bread. We've got a rather large, for him, jar of water. So, sustenance from God. God is a great provider. And this, of course, was an angel that had come to see him. So he's got bread and he's got water. He fell too hungrily and then he lay down and he fell fast asleep again. A second time the voice woke him. Get up and have something to eat. 
or else the journey will be too much for you. And by now, Elijah was wide awake. He felt better for the sleep and for the new supply of food and water so wonderfully provided. He knew that God did care about him. He'd sent his special messenger to comfort him and make him strong. That food kept Elijah going for a long time. And he went on with his journey until he came to Mount Sinai. This was the sacred mountain where God had spoken to their great leader, Moses. That was a long time ago, wasn't it, when we did that? I think that was probably around April or May when we did the Moses stories. And he'd made a covenant with the people of God when he brought them out of Egypt. So God has come to Elijah. Elijah couldn't come to him, he just ran away. But God came to him and gave him all that he needed, some shelter, food and water. And God will provide for all our needs if we're truly his. So that's a lovely story that reminds us again what Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And come unto me, if you, if you are thirsty, come without money and buy the water of life from the Lord Jesus Christ. All these stories remind us of Jesus. So thank you very much for listening. I hope that comforts you. If you're worried about anything tonight before you go to sleep, remember that God is a great and wonderful and powerful God, but he also relates to us and he gives us all the things that we need. So we're just going to pray now. Hands together and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a great provider. We thank you, Lord, you give us the very things that we need. And we thank you for the way you encouraged Elijah by showing him your love. Lord, encourage us to, if we're feeling a little bit discouraged tonight, and help us to put all our trust in you. Above all, we thank you for Jesus, the bread of life. We thank you that we can be sustained by him for our journey. Amen. And now we're just going to do the blessing before you go to sleep. So, la, la. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you safe, and the Lord give you his peace till we meet again. Amen. Good night, everyone, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.